Glenn's Homophobia Newsletter, Volume 3, Number 2, Dear Subscriber. First of all, I'd like to apologize for the lack of both the spring and summer issues of Glenn's Homophobia Newsletter. I understand that you subscribed with the promise that this was to be a quarterly publication. Four seasons worth of news from the front lines of our constant battle against oppression. That was my plan. It's just that last spring and summer were so overwhelming that I, Glenn, just couldn't deal with it at all. I'm hoping you'll understand. Please accept as a consolation the fact that this issue is almost twice as long as the others. Keep in mind the fact that it isn't easy to work 40 hours a week and produce a quarterly publication. Also, while I'm at it, I'd like to mention that it would be wonderful if everyone who read Glenn's Homophobia Newsletter also subscribed to Glenn's Homophobia Newsletter. It seems that many of you are very generous when it comes to lending issues to your friends and family. That is all very well and good, as everyone should understand the passion with which we as a people are hated beyond belief. But at the same time, it costs to put out a newsletter, and every dollar helps. It costs to gather data, to Xerox and staple and mail, let alone the cost of my personal time and energies. So if you don't mind, I'd rather you mention Glenn's Homophobia Newsletter to everyone you know, but tell them they'll have to subscribe for themselves if they want the whole story. Thank you for understanding. As I mentioned before, last spring and summer were very difficult for me. In late April, Steve Dolger and I broke up and went our separate ways. Steve Dolger, see Newsletters Volume 2, Numbers 1 through 4, and Volume 3, Number 1, turned out to be the most homophobic homosexual I've ever had the displeasure of knowing. He lives in constant fear, afraid to make any kind of mature emotional commitment afraid of growing old and losing what's left of his hair, and afraid to file his state and federal income taxes, which he has not done since 1987. Someday, perhaps someday very soon, Steve Dolger's past will come back to haunt him, and we'll see how Steve and his little 17-year-old boyfriend feel when that happens. Steve was very devious and cold during our breakup. I felt the chill of him well through the spring and late months of summer. With deep feelings come deep consequences, and I, Glenn, spent the last two seasons of my life in what I can only describe as a waking coma, blind to the world around me, deaf to the cries of suffering others, mutely unable to express the stirrings of my wildly shifting emotions. I just came out of it last Thursday. What has Glenn discovered? I have discovered that living blind to the world around you has its drawbacks, but, strangely, it also has its rewards. While I was cut off from the joys of, say, good food and laughter, I was also blind to the overwhelming homophobia that is our everlasting cross to bear. I thought that for this edition of the newsletter I might write something along the lines of a homophobia week in review, but this single week has been much too much for me. Rather, I will recount a single day. My day of victimization began at 7.15 a.m. when I held the telephone receiver to my ear and heard Drew Pearson's voice shouting, Fag! 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 over and over again. It rings in my ears still. Fag, I'll kick your ass good and hard the next time I see you. God damn you, Fag! You, reader, are probably asking yourself, who is this Drew Pearson, and why is he being so homophobic towards Glenn? It all began last Thursday. I stopped into Dave's quick stop on my way home from work and couldn't help but notice the cashier, a bulky, short-haired boy who had athletic scholarship written all over his broad, dullish face and Drew Pearson, I'm here to help, written on a name tag pinned to his massive chest. I took a handbasket and bought, I believe, a bag of charcoal briquettes and a quartered fryer. At the register, this Drew fellow rang up my items and said, I bet you're going home to grill you some chicken. I admitted that that was indeed my plan. Drew struck me as being very perceptive and friendly. Most of the quick-stop employees are homophobic, but something about Drew's manner led me to believe that he was different, sensitive, and open.' 